everyone you are watching live law and this is ostika das welcome to another episode of courts this week where we bring to you the most pertinent legal developments that took place last week across the country filmmaker vivek agnihotri of kashmir files fame personally tendered an unconditional apology before the delhi high court for his offensive remarks about justice s murlidhar on twitter Agni Hotri quoted controversy for accusing the former judge of the Delhi High Court and present Chief Justice of the Orissa High Court of bias in 2018. On the microblogging platform, Agni Hotri had claimed that Justice Murli Dhar granted bail to activist and Bhima Koregao accused Gautam Navlakha due to his wife's association with him. In the aftermath, the court initiated suo moto contempt proceedings against Agni Hotri. Last year in December he had filed an affidavit before a bench of justices Siddharth Mridul and Talwant Singh offering an apology for his controversial tweets but the court was unwilling to accept an apology in an affidavit and directed the filmmaker to express remorse in person the matter was adjourned twice this year because agnihotri did not appear in court before he was discharged last week after he finally tendered an apology in person in an important development coming out of kochi the kerala high court set aside a sessions court order dropping culpable homicide charges against ias officer sriram venkitraman in a drunk driving case in 2019 journalist km bashir was allegedly killed when a vehicle driven by venkit raman ran over him at high speed in thiruvananthapuram district of kerala it was alleged that venkit raman was in an inebriated state which led to the accident among other provisions venkit raman was booked under section 304 of the indian penal code which provides the punishment for culpable homicide not amounting to murder and section 201 that penalizes anyone for causing evidence to disappear or for giving false information a bench of justice bechu kurian thomas held that these charges against the accused under sections 304 and 201 of the ipc could not be dropped the bombay high court has refused to quash an fir against a 26 year old kashmiri professor booked for his whatsapp status terming the abrogation of article 370 a black day for jammu and kashmir a division bench of justices sunil shukre and mm sathe observed that the status was posted without giving any reason and without making any critical analysis of the step taken by the central government towards abrogation of article 370 of the constitution the bench observed that because of this prima facie the professor had committed an offence punishable under section 153a of the ipc section 153a penalizes the promotion of enmity between different groups on grounds of religion race place of birth and residence the offence is a cognizable non bailable offence and the punishment for the same may extend to 3 years or fine or both in a significant direction relating to the legal profession the supreme court has constituted a high powered committee to oversee the process of verification of the degree certificates of advocates former supreme court judge justice deepak gupta will be heading the committee as its chairperson other than him the committee will also comprise former judge of the allahabad high court justice arun tandon and former chief justice of delhi high court Justice Rajendra Menon apart from senior advocates Rakesh Devedi and Maninder Singh the bar council of india has also been permitted to nominate three members to the committee these directions were passed by a bench of chief justice dy chandrachur and justices ps narasimha and jb pardiwala the bench said that ensuring the genuineness of the qualifications of advocates enrolled with the state bar councils was of utmost importance to protect the integrity of the administration of justice the committee has been asked to start work on a convenient date and to file a status report by august 31 the supreme court set aside an order by the calcutta high court directing a cbi probe into allegations of an attack 
on the convoy of Minister of State for Home Affairs, Nishit Pramanik, in Kuch Bihar in February this year. The Calcutta High Court had issued these directions in a PIL filed by BJP leader Shubhendu Adhikari, who claimed that at the behest of the ruling Trinamul Congress party, the police had not taken any action against the perpetrators. However, the top court said that the High Court had not applied its mind to the entire facts when it issued these directions. Saying this, a bench of Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and Justices P.S. Narasimha and J.B. Pardiwala ordered the Calcutta High Court to apply its mind afresh to the material placed by the West Bengal police and decide whether the case needed an investigation by the Central Bureau of Investigation. The Supreme Court dismissed petitions which sought directions to complete the recruitment processes initiated to the Indian Army and Air Force which were discontinued after the Agnipat scheme was announced in June 2022. The petitions were filed against the Delhi High Court's judgment upholding the Agnipat scheme. This tour of duty style short term military recruitment scheme allows Indians between the ages of 17 and a half and 23 to apply for the armed forces and be inducted for a tenure of four years. The Supreme Court refused to grant bail to the two convicts in the 2015 OP Jindal rape case. Three law students of Jindal Global Law School were accused of blackmailing and gang raping a female student of the same institution for about two years. Of them, one was acquitted by the Punjab and Haryana High Court last year, while the convictions of one Hardik Sikri and one Karan Chhabra were confirmed. The two convicts have now come up in appeal before the top court. On a previous occasion, the Apex Court issued limited notice in their appeal. The Supreme Court has observed that its decision in CBI versus Anupam J. Kulkarni requires to be reconsidered. In this judgment, the top court had held that there could not be police custody beyond 15 days from the date of arrest. After making this observation, a bench comprising Justices M. R. Shah and C. T. Ravi Kumar granted permission to the Central Bureau of Investigation to take an accused into custody beyond the prescribed limit of 15 days. It noted that in 2021, a special court had allowed the agency to take him into custody for seven days. However, back then, the CBI could only interrogate him for two and a half days, considering that he got hospitalized in the middle and was eventually enlarged on interim bail. The bench observed, and I quote, by not permitting the CBI to have the police custody interrogation, for the remainder period of seven days, it will be giving a premium to an accused who has been successful in frustrating the judicial process. The Supreme Court directed all state governments to ensure that mercy petitions in death penalty cases are decided and disposed of at the earliest. A bench comprising Justices M. R. Shah and C. T. Ravi Kumar passed this direction in a plea by the state of Maharashtra challenging a judgment of the Bombay High Court in which the High Court had commuted death sentences to life imprisonment on the ground of inordinate delay. The bench of the Apex Court directed, and I quote, Mercy petitions against death sentences are to be decided at the earliest so that the accused are not benefited by such an inordinate delay. This, the court said, would ensure that first, the accused was cognizant of their fate and second, that justice was done to the victim. Last week, in a hilarious example of a courtroom blunder that had netizens roaring with laughter, an order was being circulated in which the name of the advocate was recorded as Mr. Putmine. For those who are unaware, names of advocates are recorded in daily orders under the names of the respective party for whom they have appeared. Now, it turns out that the source of this gaffe was the clerk of the advocate on record in question. The lawyer had apparently directed his clerk to put his name in the online appearance portal so that it could be recorded in the order. But instead of entering the lawyer's name, the clerk submitted, put mine, 
in the court's portal and the mistake came to be immortalized in the record of proceedings. In an interesting turn of events, the Supreme Court took suomoto cognizance of this matter after it blew up online. However, it was summarily disposed of since the concerned lawyer tendered an unqualified apology for the embarrassment caused to the court. A bench of Justices Krishna Murari and Sanjay Karol accepted his apology and closed the matter without taking any action against the advocate, his erring clerk or the court officers after noting that the mistake was indeed bona fide. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever we upload a video and visit our website www.livelaw.in to read our detailed reports. I'll see you again next time.